In today's video, we're going to use arrays and playmaker using the asset array maker to create something like this that we have here in this prototype where I collect this cube and this cube. And when I click here, I drop them in the order that I collected them. Now this can be useful for, for creating an inventory system for your player or for, for whatever you, whatever the creativity sparks in you, uh, for, for arrays. I found it very useful in my own projects and I'm sure you will too. All right, so let's get started. After you've installed your array maker package, you're going to have a bunch of actions as well as some new tabs in playmaker add-ons. We're going to be using this one in our, in our project. It's add array list proxy to selected objects. So I put it into my game manager, which is the parent of all these objects inside. And you're going to see that it has a reference. I'm going to reference name it cargo. Now it's important to remember your reference name because that's going to be the name that all your actions array actions are going to ask you for so that it can be placed into this array list. If you were to have more than one arrays, it would give you much more uh, complexities to play with. But in this particular case, we're just going to be using one for what we need. So I, after I put in the array list proxy, you already saw that we already, that we can put in the blue and green cube into the array list. So we're going to be using the red cube, which is a prefab I have created of the red cube. You're going to see inside the, the cube that it has two states already placed, a click cube, which is just a mouse pick event that lets you click on the cube to take it to the next state. And in this state, this is the state that we're going to put our, our object into that array. So let's go into array add. This allows us to put our object into the array. So to f first, we've got to find the array. So specify game object, uh, let's find that object. We have it as our parent, so we can use this action, get parent. And we use owner, store that result as parent. I've already created two variables for the owner and the parent. You're gonna see that I have a space underscore go. Now what that does, it's a cool little trick that lets you see the geo or whatever you put on the right hand side it's a bit more for for an organized touch to your to your project so i'm going to specify that game object as parent and here's where it's asking for my reference cargo and i want to add in the object that i've clicked on so game object owner but i don't the the game doesn't know who the owner is right now so i'm going to get owner put that in store that game object as owner and now it knows who the owner is now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna deactivate the object so that it's sort of like an illusion that it disappears and reappears into here it's gonna disappear into the the inventory system of, of the the player but it's actually in the array that we created so we have to deactivate the object Put that as the last one so it's the last action that the game that the state does deactivate use owner all right now we're going to go into hover and you're going to see that i already have some states here click hover is the same thing when you click it it goes to the next state now we have to use a new action called array list get next now what this does is that it's going to go through the array list and get the next object every time it goes into the state. So let's specify the game object. I remember I'm already using a get parent, so I'm going to use the parent. The reference, it's asking for the reference again. The reset, it lets you know, it's, it's, it's just the bool that lets you know if it has reset or not, it sets it to true or false. We don't need that. The start index and end in index is to let the get next know where to start. It can start at either 12 to 15 or just keeping it at zero to zero so that it goes to each and every one of them. Loop event is an event that lets you uh, go to the a state of, of your choice to go back to this state to, to keep looping and get every single 
get next until it finished and once it finishes then it goes to this event you can use this event to to uh, state that you're finished you don't need to use get next anymore and if it doesn't find anything then it'll be a failure event you can use this one for failures so what we're looking for is this game object so we're gonna set it to game object and this variable is what it's going to put uh, the game object into so it's gonna get next and place it as a picked cube go now I have three game object compare tags and I'm gonna be using that instead of loop event finish event or failure event and the reason for that is because in case I want a specific action to do for each one of these then what I want is to look for the tag so I've already set this as red T and that's the trigger I mean the tag that it's that it's looking for so we go back and you're gonna see I look at the picked cube go that I just picked up and look at the tag red T if it's true then go here to red trigger so let's do the actions that we want to portray this illusion that we're looking for so we're gonna set the position we want it to appear back here when it's uh, when it's um, when it's clicked on I've already created a variable called hover position with the v3 next to it and we want to set the position of the picked up object the picked cube but we need to know which vector 3 to use so we're going to get position of the hover 3 because it's moving left to right we want to get the position at the moment when you click on it so we're going to set the use uh, uh, game object to use owner and vector to hover position vector 3 now we need to reactivate the object because as you know we deactivated it so let's activate game object and we're going to set that game object to specify picked cube make sure it's activated and then we want it to go back to click hover so let's use the next frame event and set that to finished now let's go to the array let's look at what's going on here now we have zero contents it's empty right now but if we click on green it filled it up click on blue it didn't fill it up but it did it's just not there because we need to click on live update this lets us update live and if it did work red should be the last one there red cube all right let's see if it all falls down in order green blue red and that is pretty much it for array list add and get next just two actions in the array maker package if you guys want to see more please just comment or post something in the forums and let me know if you want to see another tutorial on a particular action or have any questions at all